Me, buddy, how you doing? Have you seen the new rockets? Well, welcome back, my fellow duplicants. Today, we're taking a look at some of the new stuff that they've got going on here inside of Oxygen Not Included. They've made some changes to rockets and research. And while I don't think all the changes are quite done yet, we're going to take a look at some of the things that they've been up to. And let's just start off with the big one here. The Radbolt Nuclear Engine. Oh, yeah. If that didn't sound like a good idea. I mean, who doesn't like their rocket exhaust with a little side of radiation? Turns out America gave it a try as well. I kid you not. <laughs> they actually built one of these things. Of all the great ideas. <laughs> but yes, in case you're wondering, this guy right here is filled up using the rad bolts. So you have to use the little rad bolt generators here in order to get enough fuel in there. So here's how I'm going to set this one up, just for right now. We'll give it plenty of solar panels and as many of these as I can actually power. Which I don't think will be very many. These things take 480 watts each. All right, so while we're waiting for this thing to charge up, let's take a look at some of the other modules that they have. So a couple updates ago, they changed the liquid oxidizer tank. It is now this sort of small little pancake thing. So this is used for liquid oxygen. So you can see that filling up right now. So that can store a total of 450 kilograms of liquid oxygen. Very nice. We also have a large cargo bay now. Boom, look at that sucker, as compared to the normal cargo bay. You know, that little dude. So this small one stores 120 kilograms of material, but the large one doesn't tell me. <laughs> so we're going to have to plug it in and find out. But we do have the solid rocket port. We can go ahead and plug that in and we'll fill this rocket with gold. Boom, just like that. 2,700 kilograms. So we also have a gas cargo canister. You know, remember that one? That's actually kind of small now. Looks pretty good. But in addition to that, we have a large gas cargo as well. Yeah, look at that cool looking thing. And then again, we need that sort of loader as well. So this would be the gas rocket port. So you can see the artwork has been updated. That looks good. So let's say we wanted to pump some oxygen in there. We can do that. Oh, you know what? I think they added a new sound for the lead suit docks as well. There you go, Bubbles. Go have fun out there. You can also see a new radiation sensor right there. <laughs> to let you know you're in the danger zone, I guess. <laughs> and there's the decontamination shower. I don't think Bubbles had anything on her. Except for food poisoning. Oh, it got rid of the food poisoning. Well, how about that? Where'd you get food poisoning from? Uh, the pooper. I got it. So that's cool. The decontamination shower actually removes germs and radiation. Ooh. So it's kind of like a wash. What, what if I send a dupe through there and they're not inside of a suit? Meep, do you have germs on you, bud? Oh, yes, you do. You have 66,000 food poisonings. There you go, Meep. Haha! -ha! It works! <laughs> <laughs> what a sound. <laughs> so yeah, the decontamination shower is useful for a lot more than just radiation. All right, so how does that compare to a sink? Okay, so there's the difference. Your sink does 120,000 germs per use for five kilograms of water. The decontamination shower does a million germs per use, but it takes 100 kilograms. So you gotta be really germy. <laughs> All right, so we've just about absorbed enough background radiation to finally start feeding up the Radbolt engine here, which means this little progress bar here should start to fill up just a little bit. Pew! There we go, just like that. It now contains 43 Radbolts. Now, in case you're wondering, these things over here actually do heat up over time. They put out 5,000 DTUs. So you can't just like slap them out and spit. Maybe you can. They don't technically have an overheat temperature, so... <laughs> All right, come on, large gas cargo canister. This sucker takes a while to fill up. Oh, you know what? You can probably do multiples of these. Yeah, that's how you load up something like that. You use multiple inputs so that you can load it up a whole lot faster. So now I'm doing two kilograms per second. All right, there's the max for the large gas cargo canister, 1,100 kilograms. Now, the Radbolt engine here is kind of a fast and efficient way to move between places, but it doesn't carry a ton of modules, only four, so I can't have all of these up here. Let me go ahead and get rid of these. You see them there? Ooh, look at all that oxygen. Look at all that gold. All right, 
Now we already know about like the small and large oxidizer tanks. But just to kind of go over that once more, these can carry things like fertilizer or oxalite. So 450 kilograms for the small one or 900 for the big one. We also have a large liquid cargo tank now. As you can imagine, this thing's going to take a while to fill up as well. Look at that. This one works with multiple ports as well. So you can see that we are now storing 20 kilograms per second there. And you can see that our Radbolt engine is starting to get a little bit excited. So the large liquid cargo tank holds 2,700 kilograms. The smaller one up here only holds 900. But wait, there's more. There's now a battery module. This thing's pretty cool. What this allows you to do is actually store power inside of your rocket. This is a 100 kilojoule battery. And if we plug it in just like this, you can see that, hey, we might be able to store a little extra power. So this is a smart battery over here. It stores 20 kilojoules. This one over here stores 100 kilojoules. So as we generate a little extra power from our solar panel here, you can see that that power is flowing into our rocket. How about that? And yes, in case you're wondering, you absolutely can <laughs> stack these up to get even more storage. And you can see the power leak here is about 400 joules per cycle, which is right in line with the smart battery, except for it's five times larger. Oh, and it doesn't put off any heat. So in case you're wondering, yes, absolutely right now you can do something like this. Slap down a rocket module. <laughs> Say, hey, I want a new rocket. What do you want to build in there? Oh, how about a battery module? Boop. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah, baby. Store all the power. I mean, until the next patch notes, but whatever. You get the idea. Now, you might be wondering, why do you need a battery module on your rocket? Aha. Well, that comes into the next things that we have over here, which are the intake fittings and outlets that you can now put inside of your rocket. So let's switch this thing up just a little bit here. We don't need the... Oop. Our power port moved. We do have another module. And this one kind of gets into the whole star map thing. Remember how we were putting telescopes inside of our rocket? Well, we now have a cardiographic module. So this automatically analyzes adjacent space stuff while you're on a voyage. So it's a research module or, or shall we say like a, a revealing module. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick here. So if we enable the telescope, you can see here that this is exposed to space. So Meep's going to come on over here. He's going to start to look through the telescope. And what we can see is that we are, you know, researching a nearby spot in space. Anyhow, on top of that, let's go ahead and put our last module that we can fit on a, a Radbolt engine here. Since we're limited to four, we can't really go with the whole larger cargo because we don't have room for the nose cone. If we want power, that is. But here's a cool thing. Remember how we used to always have to like come in here and dump gas and stuff inside of this rocket? Well, now we have cool little fittings that we can put inside of here. So let's go ahead and select the gas output fitting real quick. And you can see that we can put this down on any wall, at least any of these steel tiles. We can then give ourselves a little gas vent right up here. Boop. And of course it needs a little bit of power, but we do have power. What I need is a power outlet. So I'll put one of those down. Just like that, we have a power outlet. We can go ahead and wire everything up that we need inside of here. So just like that, we can now bring oxygen inside of our rocket. Of course, that's only if we have it stored in the in the rocket in the first place. So we're kind of limited on this one. So let's remove this real quick. We're going to add a gas cargo canister real quick. This is where we're going to put our little gas port in. Boom, just like that. So now we're bringing in oxygen to this tank here, but you can see that it's not staying inside of there reason it isn't is because look it's coming out here haha -ha! we now have ways to get oxygen and stuff inside of our little rocket modules without moving all the little canisters around how nice is that all right so we have a lot of oxygen inside of here but let's say we want to get rid of the carbon dioxide so there is a gas intake thing that we can do we can slap this down somewhere wherever it seems fitting let's say we put a mini gas pump down here i don't know maybe a gas element sensor so then that can then run up here like this into here. Now, the carbon dioxide should flow back into the tank, which probably means it's going to come back inside of here. So if we're not looking to scrub it, if we're just looking to store it temporarily, probably need a filter. So something a bit like this, 
gas pipe element sensor. And if this is carbon dioxide, then I want it to just go back into the tank. So now let me go ahead and brush in a little bit of carbon dioxide, 10 kilograms of it right over here. So you can see that that is moving around. All right, let's put a little bit more carbon dioxide in there. There we go. So now we've got carbon dioxide. We're able to pull that in. And now if we go back out over here, what we should see inside of this is that yes, we have oxygen. We also have carbon dioxide increasing as well. So that's pretty neat. Although I'm not so sure it's <laughs> easier to do this rather than just like destroying the carbon dioxide via crushing or something, but. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Well, um, that didn't work. You just brought carbon dioxide back in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, there we go. Okay, not saying that you would actually set something up like this, but to be fair, this is probably not something you would actually set up. You might just bring in oxalite or canisters or whatever, and then maybe pump out the carbon dioxide if you have extra. I don't know. Something like that might actually help you if you need a longer term sort of thing. But the thing is, we definitely have a lot more options now that we have intakes and outputs for liquid, gas, power, all of that stuff inside of our, our rocket like this. So that's pretty cool. But I think our next step here is to do a little bit more research, which means it's rocket time, baby! Yeah! So let's go ahead and slap that cardiographic module back in here. Boom! And see what's up. Oh, it sounds so cool. I love it. Hey, Meep, you want to head in there? Looking good, Meep. <laughs> you need some exosuit training. There we are, Meep. All right, let's change your destination. Oh, I guess we can telescope all the way over there, but let's go over here real quick. And I think we'll have enough power to get there. Begin launch sequence. Oh, yes! <laughs> Isn't that nice? Boom! As I'm sure my grandpa figured out, nuclear power rockets do have a, a nasty side. And that has to do with their radiation. <laughs> Ooh! Look at that radiation. Are you kidding me? Nuclear fallout. 700 rads per cycle. The heat, though, isn't too bad. Only at 1,500 degrees Celsius. Oh, wait, that, that one's a little hotter, 2,000. Okay, so it's kind of hot. But anyhow, there it goes. <laughs> and look at all of this stuff condensing around here. So we've got solid nuclear waste. Very nice. I like to have a little bit of that laying around. <laughs> and plenty of uh, just liquid nuclear waste down here with all of its radio contaminants. With all of its radioactive contaminants. This does, however... Give us a nice opportunity to do something a bit like this. No longer do we need all of that stuff there. Let's just go ahead and get rid of those old Radbolt things. And instead, plug this one in. And look at this thing! It's now absorbing 130 Radbolts per cycle. Yes! Oh, and it's not alone. We can, we can set up a couple of these. Which means if we wanted to get some research out of this, we can. We'll just bounce that over this way, then up, and then over there. Ha! Ah, oh, but this stuff condensed to solid crap. It wasn't hot enough. That really hurts the amount of rad bolts we can absorb. Hmm, that needs to be a little bit hotter. Oh, well, there is a way to handle that. If we make that metal, I don't know, hit it with some rocket exhaust. That should do it. Can you change your location? Just head right back down there, please. Blah. Mm, just blast it off one more time for me, please. Okay, technically that's just a little bit too far away. Can't quite get there. Hey, hey, go ahead and land back down there real quick. <laughs> so much pretty. <laughs> Love it. Okay. <laughs> here, let's put some ceramic tiles right down here. Give this a nice shot for all of that nuclear radiation just to find its way right down here. Give that a try, Meep. Blast. Space is cold. Well, never fear. A new solution is here. When's the last time you used this thing? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Melt. Melt that nuclear waste. Give me more. Oh, collecting rad bolts. 990 per cycle. Look at that thing. Boom. All right, me. So, I know you're enjoying your time out here. However, uh, I want to see you actually research some stuff, so... Head on over there, please. Whoop, just like that. Oh, look at this. Our Radbolt 
Reflector's doing its thing. Our atomic collider is now full. Perfect. This means Bubbles over here can now start to do some research. Bubbles are going to need atomic researching, so... Yeah. Skills? What does an atomic research hat look like? Oh, I like it. Ooh! Fancy. Nothing like having uranium right next to your brain. Solid choice there, Bubbles. Ooh! We discovered the new planet! Ta-da! Oh, and look at... Listen to that fancy sound. Cool. So, we were able to discover this because Meep's... You know, the, the module on the rocket that Meep is flying here is doing that thing where it's actually revealing nearby tiles. So it should it should reveal this one, even though there isn't like a progress bar on it, which is a little bit awkward. All right, Bubbles, go ahead and do some research. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I don't think you want to stand right here, Bubbles. That thing is just pointed right at your head. I think this is a little bit more safe, just like that. There we go. I'm pretty sure the Atomic Collider is a clicker game. Because Bubbles is just going ham on this machine. Hey, look at this! Meep has now revealed this tile. Ha! That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and bring that back real quick. Boom! My rocket is back. And look at that. We only used up about half the battery while we were out there. Meep, you can leave, bud. Yes, I did put my outhouses in the vacuum of space. I figured... <laughs> I figured that was a good thing to do. What did you do there, Bubbles? You just... You just looked at it. Alright. So, as you can see, my duplicates are all about that research. And, as it turns out, there's one more layer of research we can now, well, we now have to go through. And that is interstellar research. Ooh. <laughs> you can find that right down here. This is the Orbital Microlab. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm So once you have that, you can unlock things like the larger module over here. It also gives you access to the research reactor. Eventually the Radbolt engine, ooh, the hydrogen engine, if you can get that far, that is actually technically the highest tier thing. You know, and a lot of other goodies as well, like the larger rocket stuff. Ooh, it's also needed. Turns out it's also needed for the monument. Okay, so that's something you're going to have to work with earlier on. So let's go ahead and slap that in here and see how it works. So that is this guy, boop, and it takes a little bit of power. Now, if we're taking a look at the research tree, we should have power being able to go into our rockets at this point. Yes, possibly. That or you have to put a dupe in there that can power it. But the battery module only takes atomic research, which technically you can get enough of that from space to, to do. So that also requires a job called the Orbital Researcher. So Meep, you're going to have that, which means you probably get a whole new hat if you wanted to. Although that looks a lot like the old research hat. You can keep your fancy rocket hat. Let's go ahead and try to research something like the larger module here. So that's going to take five interstellar research. I've yet to play with this, so this will be this will be kind of new. So Meep's going to run up here. I do have power already inside of my rocket. All right, let's go ahead and fly this out into space just a little bit. Boom! There we go. Okay, so Meep, you're all the way out here. Ooh, that was fancy. This thing takes plastic. Oh, how about... And look at him work on it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> this is the best animation ever. Boop. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to hear the sound for this thing. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we completed that research. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so I'm trying to research something a little bit more advanced. This requires all the different research. So one of the things I'll mention here is that we probably won't be able to run through the atomic collider quite as fast as I'm doing right now, uh, because you just won't have the, the Radbolt engine creating as much nuclear waste for you down here. Of course, once you get there, it sure seems like it's quite easy to obtain a, a, a couple of spots here where you have high radiation. All right, let's go ahead and throw meat back inside of here. I want you to fly all the way out here. Ready to go. So begin launch. And off he goes. All right. So the amount of plastic consumed per research point is five kilograms. So that's something to keep in mind. All right. So Meep is all the way out here doing the research, but also the telescope should be scanning the local area. Oh, no. You need more plastic. No problem. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Meep is out of power. 
and quickly running out of oxygen, too. Uh-oh. What? Okay, just out of curiosity, does this rocket keep revealing the nearby areas if it doesn't have any power? Or a duplicate to fly around? Doesn't look like it. What if I drop a dupe out here? Where do you go, Abe, if you fall off the map? What? All right, so there you have it. They definitely made some changes here to the rockets and the whole research system. So you're definitely going to have to use your rockets a whole lot more in order to progress through the game. So it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out in an actual playthrough. Although I think they're still working on some other stuff. So we're not quite there yet. But at any rate, that's all I got time for today. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar out. Oh, no. Hey. Uh. <laughs>